Let's return now to the uncertain future of the HS2 high-speed rail network. The government has decided to review the affordability, impacts and efficiency of the project to decide whether it should continue or even be scrapped. Joining me now from Westminster is Miata Fambule, CEO of the New Economics Foundation, and in Durham is James Randbottom, Chief Executive of the North East England Chamber of Commerce. Uh, welcome to you both. Um, I'll ask you both initially the same question. Uh, first to you, uh, Miata, what do you make of this review? Is it a good idea? Yeah, I think it's definitely a good idea that the government uh, should be reviewing HS2. I mean, look, Regional inequality is a big issue. Uh, we, want, we have one of the highest regional inequalities in Europe in this country. So I'm all in favour of investment in our northern economy, in our economy in the Midlands in order to rebalance the economy. But it's not clear that HS2 is the right answer. And actually, you know, HS2 Limited's own assessment says that 40 percent of the benefits that will accrue from HS2 will go to London. The North West will only get 18 percent of the uh, benefits. West Midlands will get 12 percent. Yorkshire and Humber, 10 percent. So it actually entrenches the regional inequality that we're trying to address. So I'd much rather see, you know, we're mm. thinking about this is likely to be somewhere in the region of 80 to 100 billion that's going to be spent on this scheme. I'd much rather that money go to northern leaders, to leaders in the Midlands, and get them to invest it in the local transport. James Ramblosson, what do you make of the, the review? Do you welcome it or are you sceptical? I think not more than sceptical. I think we're very concerned by it. There is so much uncertainty around at the moment because of all sorts of other factors. And this is just adding more at a time that we are really desperately trying to encourage businesses to invest and really make the most of the rest of the UK rather than just London. And the reality is, is that we are desperately short of transport capacity, both road and rail. And this is about investing in a completely new line, which is much, much needed. And if it is not progressed, we will end up having this debate for many decades to come in the same way that we have with airport runways, which has continued to rumble on. But the problem does not go away. But, but the costs are spiralling. Does the government continue to, to pour more money and more money into a project that never seems to have a, a finite budget? Well, look, the costs of, of all such projects continue to go up, but what cost do you put on the transport infrastructure for this country? Overall, we only spend about 1% of GDP on our infrastructure, and that's not just transport, that's digital, that's energy, that's flood protection, the whole lot. It is not a huge amount of money in the greater scheme of things, and we desperately need to invest in the backbone of this country. Miata respond to that, that the investment is needed to close the divide of which you speak? Well, no one is disputing that we need to invest in infrastructure, um, and that's transport, and that's roads, and that's other sorts of infrastructure investment. I think the question is whether this is the right scheme. And, you know, when the government first looked at the scheme, when it was actually less than, it was closer to sort of 33 billion when it was first assessed, the cost has now gone up to, up to 46%. The cost benefit was really marginal. And if it is the case that actually the scheme is likely to cost conservatively about 86 billion, that's what HS2 Limited are muting at the moment, possibly up to 100 billion, you've got to ask yourself on one scheme, is it right to plough this amount of money when we could be using it to invest in other infrastructure across the North and the Midlands? You know, I'd quite like for us to think about connecting the West to the East, connecting Manchester through to Leeds, through to Sheffield. I think there's lots of investment we need to do to upgrade our existing infrastructure and our existing rail network. And there's a key job that we need to do to connect smaller towns to our big cities across the North and Midlands. So absolutely, we need huge amounts of investment investment. No one is disputing that. But if you've got 80 billion to 100 billion to play with, why would you spend it on this one scheme that doesn't do the critical job that people say it will of rebalancing the economy? Because the benefits accrue predominantly to London and other parts of our economy, the Yorkshire and Humber, Northwest, Midlands, get far less of the benefits. So actually, let's give all the money to the northern leaders. Let's give it to the leaders in the West Midlands, uh, to the East Midlands, and get them to invest it in their transport network, get them to invest it in critical infrastructure. And I think we'd get far more value for money out of that. James Ramsworth, what do you think to that? Would it be more, if it were more targeted 
towards uh, the region that you, that you represent, that it would actually be better serving? Well, the truth is that we need both. And if you ask all the Northern leaders, as has just been suggested, we all know that we need both HS2 and the East-West Railway Line. Uh, it is no good us just being able to communicate East-West across Yorkshire and the North-West if we cannot get North-South. And currently, the East Coast Main Line and the West Coast Main Lines are absolutely at the limit of what capacity they need. We're told with the East Coast Main Line that if the work could be done, and, and it's not even certain it could be, to get it up to any sort of capacity to cope with the next 20 years, it would have to be closed somewhere on its route every single weekend for the next 14 years. Um, we're being cut off next weekend, this, this bank holiday weekend, uh, because the East Coast Main Line is being closed for three days, and the disruption it's causing is immense. To face that every weekend for 14 years is an unthinkable situation. We absolutely need to communicate north-south up and down the length of this country, and HS2 is the only option. Yeah, so HS2 is the well, only option. Also, what it, we have it, to look at is money, money has <laughs> already been spent, but what about the money that's already been spent? Is that simply to be forgotten? If you've spent a certain amount, surely you should just continue with the project and, and finish the job. Well, if you've spent less than 10 billion, um, it makes, and to, for something that all the evidence suggests is not a good idea, it makes no sense to then chuck in another 90 billion just because we spent 10 billion. I think we've got to cut our losses at some point and figure out what's the best thing to spend so that, that money, money is, on. So that money is simply lost? It's simply lost, but, but what you know, about adapting? in the end... What about adapting the project, though? So, so I think I think there are things that you could do to adapt, uh, but I think some of the upfront investment that's been put into it makes it incredibly difficult. This is why it's so hard, and this is why it's politically so hard. And actually, there is a kind of juggernaut that's moving towards this thing. And you know, and I, you know, I say this as someone that used to be a supporter of HS2, and then I looked at the evidence, and I was like, well, actually, it's really hard. You could just about make the case at 33 billion, mm, just about at 56 billion, at 80 to 100 billion. Really, is this the best way to spend this money? And, you know, and to the point about the Northern leaders, I tell you this, the reason why they are wholly behind this is because they think it's the only bit of uh, scheme in town. So they're not going to turn their nose up at 56 to 100 billion. But if you said to them, look, we'll give you this, we'll give you a pot of 80 to 100 billion. What do you want to spend it on that you believe will boost your economies? I promise you, HS2 will not be at the top of their list.